everybody, welcome to Catherine Sews. Today I'm gonna to share with you some great techniques for making swimsuits. I spent most of my life thinking that swimsuits were really hard to make, and I had made everything. I had made wedding dresses, suits for women, suits for men, reupholstering furniture. Like, I had made everything, and somehow making a swimsuit seemed like a really scary thing to do. I thought for sure I would need special equipment, and there was no way that the finished product would be probably anything I would want to wear in public. But you know what? I could not have been more wrong. A few years ago, I had a student teacher in my classroom who was a fashion design graduate and a competitive swimmer. So she had made loads of swimsuits and she taught me some great techniques. So thank you, Ms. Jenner. And so since then, I've made all of these different samples of swimsuits for my students to try on. And in each of the samples, I sew in a little label so that the students know which pattern it is and what size it is. My students now make them and they make adorable swimsuits and they love doing it. And the nice thing is it only takes a little bit of fabric and they're super fun and fast to make. Let me show you some of the techniques that made such a big difference for me. So today I'm gonna to take you through making like a simple string bikini show you some really great techniques to get it to look professional. You can add in a cup if you like, and I'll show you a great way to do that on a budget. And the little bikini bottoms, so cute. If you're interested in, in sewing swimsuits, but you're not really a string bikini type of person, <laughs> me either, stick around, learn the techniques, and then in my next video, I'm going to show you how to just add a simple panel to the front of that same string bikini pattern to give you just a bit more coverage in the front. <laughs> That's what I like. <laughs> you can make this entirely on your regular sewing machine. Even in a pinch, you can use a regular universal needle. It is recommended that you use a stretch needle when you're using so swimsuit fabrics, but honestly, you can get away with your universal needle most of the time. If you see your needle skipping stitches, that's when you know you need to switch to the stretch needle. So let me take you through what you're gonna need to make this and let me show you those techniques that changed everything for me. So here's everything you'll need to make a bikini. You'll need four-way stretch lycra fabric. Make sure it stretches in both directions and that it has great recovery. Recovery meaning that when you stretch it, it comes right back. So I would say half a yard or half a meter I'm using a contrast color to make the strings, but you can use the same. Then you'll also want to have a little bit of swimsuit lining, and this is just like a nylon knit. It doesn't really have to be anything too special. This one is just a two-way stretch, like it just stretches on the cross grain. It doesn't have any stretch in the lengthwise grain. If you're doing a one-piece suit, you do need the lengthwise stretch, but for a little string bikini like this, this one is going to be just fine. The pattern I'm using for the bottoms, I'm using an old Simplicity 9777. For the top, I'm using, if this one is newer, probably easier to find, I'm using Quick Sew 3239. Or I'll, I'll put a similar pattern that you can find online in the description. This one is probably easy enough to make yourself as well. It's basically just a triangle for the size small. It's 11 and a half inches across. The sides here are seven and three quarters. Yeah, it's seven and three quarters all the way along. So you could easily just draft that one yourself. Other things you'll need are swimsuit elastic. I just use quarter inch and it's cotton and rubber and it's also labeled swimsuit elastic. And this just stands up much better to chlorine and salt water. I would get about three yards or three meters of that. A stretch needle. I don't really like using ballpoint on these kind of stretch fabrics. The stretch works much better. Ballpoint more for like cotton t-shirts and things like that. For your thread you want to use polyester thread. Um, a cotton thread just doesn't stand up as well to the chlorine and salt water. So polyester thread is good. And then some pins, your good sewing scissors or a rotary cutter. I will be using a serger today, but you can always get away with a zigzag instead, instead of serging, and swimsuits are no exception. You can make this swimsuit entirely on your regular machine. I'm going to be cutting mine out of three small pieces of fabric that I have. Um, and luckily, 
Because it's four-way stretch, I can turn pieces onto the cross grain, which normally with knits you cannot do. But on a four-way stretch like this, I can turn the pieces on the cross grain so I can get my pieces all to fit like that. And you can either pin and cut with scissors or throw down some weights and use a rotary cutter. Now for the lining, I do need to pay more attention to the grain because as I said, it is just a two-way stretch, not a four-way stretch. I'm folding it on the lengthwise grain and my piece of lining is 20 inches by 30 inches. And I can turn the top on the cross grain because this piece gathers, it doesn't actually need any stretch at all, really. Good. Now, you don't necessarily have to line the back of a swimsuit like high-end bathing suits that are sold in stores that are fully lined and then the cheaper ones they tend not to line the back and then the very cheapest ones don't even line the front but I think it's important to at least line the front um, but I'll show you both ways because it is a different technique if you're not lining the back I'll show you both ways for the straps I'll be cutting pieces that are one and a half inches wide. I don't want it to be too skinny, which it makes it harder to turn the strap. So let's go one and a half. I don't have the full width of the fabric here, so for, for the tie that goes around the body, I'll use black. If you're going full width of the fabric, then you'll just need one for around the body, and then a second one, which will give you two for the neckties, and then a third one, which will give you four for the sides of the bottoms to tie. If you are planning to insert cups into the top, then just take your two lining pieces and you, all you need to do is cut off one corner. If you come in about two inches from that point, then that once your hems are all done, that opening is still big enough to get a cup into. If you want to be able to insert cups into your swimsuit, you can buy ready-made swimsuit cups. Or what I do, actually, I save old bras and I'm going to cut the cup out of that. So I'm just cutting right beside the, the wire and across the top edge. There you go. There's the perfect cup to put into your swimsuit. So the, for the first sewing step, we're going to start with the bottoms. I want to show you how you can clean line these, meaning that when you look inside, the seams are all hidden. This one is just lined at the front, not at the back, but the seam is hidden inside the lining. But on this one, both the side seam and the crotch seam are both hidden inside the lining. So that's called clean lined, and I want to show you how to do that. It's not that difficult, and it just makes the suit so much more professional looking but also more comfortable because you don't have a big seam there that has to be zigzagged or surged and adding more bulk there and it's kind of a fun technique this mesh is an alternative swimsuit lining it is nice that it keeps everything nice and lightweight so to do that clean lining we're going to put the front and back of the fabric together right sides together and on a string bikini, you don't have the side seam, so we're just matching up these bottom edges. Now, the trickiest bit of these bottoms is the fact that we have one straight edge going into a curved edge. You're going to just stack your corners together. This is, this is honestly the trickiest bit of the whole thing. Anytime you've got a corner cut on an angle like this, if the angles are different, if I just match up a corner and I were to sew that seam like that with matching up the corner, then when I open it out, I my edges aren't together. So it's not the corner I'm trying to match. It's the sewing line. So I know I'm going to be sewing this at about a quarter inch. And so that's, it's the quarter inch point that I want to match. Do you see what I mean? Then when I open this out, then my edges are together. Makes sense? It makes a smooth line when you open it out. I'll pin the other corner, but we're not sewing yet. We're going to be stacking the lining on here as well. So matching up that 
quarter inch mark. That's where I want my edges to cross there. And then one pin in the center. Even though that's such a short seam, it's two different shapes. So I want to also pin together that side. So those three pins can do it. That's fine. To capture that whole seam in the lining, what I want to do is now take my front lining and the back lining. If there was a right and a wrong side, these would be right sides together. And then the order that I have them in is back, front, front, back. Good? You okay with that? Alrighty. And I promise this is the hardest part. After we get this first sewing step done, it's going to be easier and less confusing. So now I'm just going to stack these on top in the exact same way. I'm just going to put my pin in there and then I can remove that first pin. Make sense? And then the other corner, same way. Stack that all together, all four corners. But if you wanted to, you could sew those first two together and then stack these on top. It probably would, it would save you from having to deal with four slippery fabrics at once. And now bringing these edges all together. Remember, they're two different shapes, so it might take a little bit of encouragement. There. So with that bit of careful pinning, that's going to be my first sewing step, just at the edge of my presser foot straight across there. If this was a regular, a regular swimsuit bottom, not the string bikini, I would be doing the exact same thing on the side seams here now. I would be stacking those all together in exactly the same configuration and sewing my two side seams as well. But for the string bikini, we just need to sew there. If you're only lining the front, you'll still put your front and back right sides together just like a normal seam. But then you'll take your front lining and you're going to sandwich the back in between the two pieces of front. So these two are right sides together. And these two, the two fronts are also right sides together, but the back is in between. And you'll just pin across there and sew that little seam. Once you sew there, you'll see what I mean, that the inside is going to look great because the seam is all fully enclosed in there. And of course the outside looks great too because you just put it right sides together like normal. So you would do the same on the side seams here stacking all three together just exactly the same way and you would just sew all three sides good okay this is that seam that i just pinned and that's what it should look like kind of like a little x and you want to be sewing starting in the middle of that x that's the only way that your edges will line up properly so it's a very small seam allowance it's a, about a quarter of an inch maybe half a centimeter this little horizontal seam is not going to get a lot of stretch so i don't really have to worry about stretching this seam out as i go and then aiming for that that v or x shape good so there's your first seam so now when i open that out i'm going to have it beautiful on the outside and beautiful on the inside as well our second sewing step now is to just baste all of those outside edges together. It's kind of now in this big hourglass configuration. I'm just going to put a few pins around the outside edge just so I don't have to fiddle too much as I sew. We're going to do a straight stitch all the way around this whole hourglass shape. I'm going to go to a four millimeter length stitch. It is a basting stitch. So I'm just going around at less than the width of my presser foot. Yeah, as soon as you can pick up that the fabric behind the presser foot back here, pick it up and put some tension on that fabric as you go. Now, if you don't have a serger, instead of going around with just that straight stitch, you could go around with a zigzag. My next step is to serge everything. So instead of you going around twice, just do this step in a zigzag stitch. So the bottoms are ready to go to the serger and serge all around those outside edges, but I'm going to get the top ready before I head to the serger. I used to put the lining and the fabric right sides together with the strap sandwiched in between and then sew around and turn it. But I don't do that anymore because I really don't like that technique. 
when you sandwich it and flip it, even if you understitch like this, you're just always going to see a little bit of that lining showing through. And I just think that looks so ugly. I really don't like that at all. Even if it's just that little tiny bit, I don't like it. So here's a better technique. What I did was I looked at how ready to wear bathing suits are made and they generally don't use that sandwiching technique on like a top like this. So I want to place it good side facing down and I'm going to place the lining on the wrong side of the fabric. And notice my two cutouts are opposite, right? It would be very easy to accidentally make them the same and that might be a little bit funny. So put them opposite. So now we're basically going to be basting these together and treating this like one fabric instead of sandwiching the strap in between with right sides together. So I'm just going to put a few pins around here and then I'll baste around it in the same way that I basted around the bottoms. And then I'll take it all to the serger. So again, if you don't have a serger and you're going to be zigzagging, then you don't need to baste and then zigzag. You can go just straight zigzag these edges all together. Good. And when I'm basting, I'm not going to come down here. I'm just going to do that edge. I don't have to go here at all. But if you're zigzagging, yes, you would. You'd go around the whole thing, which is exactly what I'll do with the serger. I'll go around the whole thing. And this little raw edge is going to be just fine because knits don't fray. If you see it start to get pushed down into the machine, raise your needle up, give it a little wiggle and don't let it get sucked in. Now at the serger, I'm just going to be going around all of those edges. And I'm trying to not cut off anything as I go, except any little scrappy bit. Now, I know that some people do this step with the elastic. I just find that just a little too much to try and control at once. So I serge first and then I apply the elastic after. It's now time to apply the elastic and we're going to be sewing that just to the inside of the serging here, but we're gonna be stretching a little bit as we go. It's a very small amount that we're gonna be stretching. And to know what that small amount feels like, I want you just to measure out 10 inches of elastic and stretch it to 11. That's the amount of stretch that I want you to do on almost every part of the swimsuit. So just kind of get used to what that feels like. It's just slight, right? It's not a big thing. However, there's one part of the swimsuit that we want to kind of come in and hug more. And that's right under the butt cheeks a little bit. So right in this section, that's where we're going to stretch a little bit more. So for that stretch, I want you to measure five inches and you're going to stretch that to eight. So that's the amount of tug just on that curved section of the back. Good. Everywhere else though, it's just going to be from 10 to 11. Get to know what that difference feels like. Good. Okay. On the bottoms, we'll be doing all four sides. So that's why you need quite a bit of elastic for this project. But we're not going to be coming right into the corner. We'll start from width away from the corner. Good. Okay. On the top, we're going to do the two sides. And again, we'll stay a thumb width away from that top corner and the bottom corners. We're not doing this big curved edge because that's where the drawstring is going to go through. So we don't want an elastic there, just on the two straight sides of the triangle. I don't pre-cut the elastic. I just bring the whole roll over with me to the machine and cut as I go. Good? Okay, let's go to the sewing machine. For basting on the elastic now, now I want to go to my longest stitch length. So I'm going to go all the way up to a five millimeter long stitch. Remember, I'm starting a thumb width away from the corner. 
and my elastic is right on top of that surging or zigzagged edge and I'm not going to stretch at all until I get a back tack in there otherwise I'll just pull the whole thing right out and now stretching from 10 to 11 it should just feel like that so it's just slight Notice I'm not stretching the swimsuit at all. I'm not stretching the fabric. I'm letting it go in at its own pace, but I'm stretching the elastic. And then I'll do my back tack again, thumb width away from the corner. So then I can cut off the elastic there and come around to the thumb width from the corner on the other side so now this is that big long edge and this is the back piece the big curve of the back piece where i'm going to do the much bigger stretch so again just start with your back tack before you do any stretch and now it's just that little 10 to 11 stretch good so now i'm at that curve now i'm going to do the stretch that was like from five to eight almost the full stretch of the elastic and I'll keep that stretch going until I reach the seam. Good, so now that I'm past that seam, I can ease up and go back to the 10 to 11 stretch. And do my back tack a thumb width from that corner. So all I have left to do is across the top of the front, and again, starting thumb width from the corner, and just with the 10 to 11 stretch. On the top now, I'll be putting the elastic on the two straight sides. At the bottom, I could be even just a little bit more than a thumb width from that bottom edge because remember, we'll be turning a casing there. So I'll go a full inch, 10 to 11 stretch here on the two sides. So there's one done. Bit of elastic. To sew the straps, this black strap is a little skinnier. It's just an inch and a quarter. The pink ones are an inch and a half wide. But this skinnier one, I just want to make sure I don't sew it and end up with too skinny of a strap. So what I'm doing is running the edge of it right in here where that clear part of my presser foot meets the silver part of the presser foot. And I've got my stitch length set to about three and a half millimeters. You have to stretch as you sew, otherwise that thread will break afterwards. So if you stretch while you sew, it's not gonna break later. Keep your edges together, and I'm going right sides together, of course. And this is my longest strap. It's full width of the fabric, so 60 inches. And I'm going to want to keep most of that length, at least 55 inches, I'm guessing. To turn it, it's too long for a loop turner. So just find yourself a safety pin that's small enough to fit in that space, but strong enough that it can't get easily bent. And then you'll just put that on your edge and dive that right through. And you'll push and pull. If you do have a serger though, let me show you what I actually prefer to do for straps. What I actually like even more than sewing my straps on the regular machine is serging them because the serging stitch is already stretchy and it's just faster and neater. So in this section, I didn't stretch at all, but it still has that much stretch and it's got more strength too because it's got the two needle threads plus the loops. So it's really strong. Like I just can't stretch that enough to break it. Make sure you can see both edges as your fabric goes through. If you can't see both edges, you might be missing that bottom edge. And turn your straps. Push, 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 and pull. And there you go. Easy peasy. So these two are actually 42 inches long. So I'm going to take one and cut it in half for the two neckties. And then the other I'll cut in half and in half again for the two side ties of the bottoms. Mm -hmm. 
So for the top, right in that point where the two elastics are pointing, so opposite the curve, on the right side, I'll take the strap and lay it right down on top of the right side, coming right down the middle, completely opposite to how we want it to end up. And I'm going to put a back tack right across there and the same on the other cup and just a little back tack with your strap going down onto that. Two top pieces have their straps on now and I also went ahead and did that to all four corners of the bottoms. So now I'm just switching my machine to a zigzag stitch that's three by three. I'm going to be turning over the edges of the elastic, just letting the elastic fold right in, and I'll be doing that zigzag stitch close to the inside edge, not that fold, but close to here. Even over this edge is fine. When I get up to the strap, I want to manipulate it, wiggle it around, tuck in more if I need to. Basically, I'm wrapping those two edges around the strap. You can tuck it down a little bit more to see that, just a little bit more of a fold. It does make the wrap a little bit easier. I can put a couple pins in there, just so I don't have to do that fiddling while I'm sewing. On all of the corners, I'm going to come across, zigzag straight across and down. So I'm not stopping, I'm not doing a back tack at the corner, I'm just kind of making my way around that corner. So where there is no elastic, I'll just fold it the same amount as if there is elastic in there. And I'll start my zigzag down here. Give my threads a little tug if I need to so I don't get stuck at the beginning of the seam. And then if it's gathered in, I need to stretch a little bit as I go. Turn again and come down. Good, so that looks fantastic. I'm gonna do exactly the same thing on the other side. Now all the way around the bottoms and then the bottoms will be done. And then there's one more step to do on the top. Now you can see why we didn't want elastic going right into the corner there, right? It's already bulky enough with this strap there. So elastic as well would have just made it too bulky. I don't find it helpful to, to pin all the way around for this step. I just find that that takes so much time and you just end up organizing it twice. So I would rather just organize as I go. Maybe just put a couple pins at each corner and wrapping around the strap, that might be helpful. So just stretch it out enough that it's not gathery. That's all the way around the bottoms, and so they are done. Then to finish off the top, I'll switch back to a straight stitch. And now I'm just turning up a finger width, one and a half centimeters, and or five eighths of an inch. It has to be enough to fit that safety pin through again. And careful here, I don't want that corner sticking out like that. That won't look nice, so make sure that gets tucked in. If you're going to be adding in the panel, don't do this step. Just stop this video here and go to the next one. And I'm sewing up here at the surged edge, not down at the fold. And when you're going around a curve like this for a casing, you kind of just have to work it in as you go. Just make that nice curve shape. You see how this part is kind of getting eased in there, that's fine. And then here again, I don't want that corner to stick out. And then go right into the next one. Now, because I left these openings here, I could easily get my 
safety pin stuck in there. So I'm going to go from the center out there on the other end, also from the center out. Otherwise my safety pin can end up getting stuck in between the lining and the fabric. There you go, that's looking cute. And then if you want to, you can take the cups. There, that just tucks in so nicely. That's so good. Excellent. And it's up to you if you want to just tie a little knot at the end of each of your strings or just leave them. And you can trim off whatever comes after your knot, just like that. I think that's cute. Trim off all your threads and you are done. Okay, so that's it for today's video. I'm so glad to have you along for the ride and I hope that I opened up the world of swimsuits for you the way Miss Jenner did for me. And if I did, make sure you hit that subscribe button. It helps out a lot. If you want to see the video where we're gonna just add that front panel to give you just a little bit more coverage, then hit the notification bell as well so that you know as soon as I upload that video. It should be pretty quick. So until then, you take care.